and we started the band together and music. Was, yeah music we, we you know i used to play the guitar and he he played guitar and a few other things as well and uh and then we started a nightclub wow even more. we actually started two nightclubs in bankstown anyway so we we were in that scene and and we were running these nightclubs it was actually funny because we we ran a nightclub in bankstown called yep. jacob street nightclub Jacob Street. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it used to opposite Bankstown, the cinema there. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, so we we became quite popular, uh, yeah. especially amongst the police, who were our well, after hours clients. Arresting you or? No, no. They, they, we we used to let them in for free, okay. and we became popular with the uh, with the police. But anyway, so one night, um, you know, we were sitting together, and we're watching everyone dancing and making fools of themselves um, uh, and one night I, I, I think we, we made a decision we wanted to turn the music off yeah. and see what people do right yeah, see what the what reaction is actually, actually experimented. we experimented yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. so, so, so sent a message, message to the, the DJ, DJ and said turn, turn the, the music, music off in, a, in exactly five minutes okay. don't warn anyone so he turned the music off and it was like the people who were dancing, it took them a good 20 seconds to realize that the music was off and to react. And it was like everyone just went into a zombie, zombie mode. Yeah. They didn't know what to do, you know. And it was at that moment I realized that uh, this can't be it. <laughs> Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah, my dear brothers and sisters. Inshallah, shortly we'll start kicking off this beautiful uh podcast inshallah ta'ala and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this podcast whatever we do inshallah for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if it's sake and sake alone inshallah um inshallah we'll be interviewing today um yani, uh, I, it's a brother inshallah who's going to be um uh, talking about uh, how his journey to, to islam and, and also he'll be, inshallah, in future, be taking care of this podcast instead of me talking to Revert and talking to everybody. Jazakallah khair, Akhi Hussain, and uh, everyone else is listening on board, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this meeting and to make it for his sake and his sake alone. Um, we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity, inshallah, to spread Islam sure. and what... Uh, and help us to help others to come to Islam. Inshallah sure. uh, ta'ala. Well, first, we'll start with uh, introducing our brother. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. This is our brother uh, Carlos. Carlo. Or Carlo. 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 Okay. I'll call you Carlos. It was easier for me. But anyway, Carlos is fine. Um, his also name is Ahmed. Inshallah. Uh, uh, Ahmed, you, you've been a river for a while now. Many years, many, many years. Alhamdulillah. How long is that exactly? <coughs> Be a subhanallah over over twenty five years now. Twenty five years. More, more. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Ahmed, just a bit of background about yourself. Um, what nationality are you? So I'm from an Italian background. Italian. So my parents are Italian. Mm -hmm. I was born here. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil mm -hmm. uh, A lot of people like stories about River say. Yeah, so they do. Can you me. just, inshallah, share with us your experience and how and you became, or how did you find Islam? Uh, so, I'd have to say that Islam was something that I was searching for from a young age, mm -hmm. uh, without knowing what it was. Um, I, you know, as a as a young younger person, I um, uh, I was always conscious of God, mm -hmm. uh, so I I always prayed. In the way that I thought was best, so I, I went to church. Um, we'd go to church every Sunday. I remember my father would drop us off at the church, and he'd say, "That's as far as I'm going," because <laughs> he hated he hated church. <laughs> so he'd drop us off and then pick us up when when it was done. Um, but I, I was, I think, on the journey from a young age. So you always you had that sort of like a fitra yeah, about. Uh, Islam in your heart, but you mm. didn't know which way to go about it. Exactly. Yes. So I, I knew there was a God. I knew there was, uh, you know, there was a purpose 
in, in this life, mm -hmm. but didn't know what it was. So when you, uh, when, at that time when you used to go to church and stuff like that, what was the sort of like, you know, the, I guess, uh, the main punch point? Like, what is that something that makes it exciting to go to a church with the food after that? Or no, it was, mainly to make, it was mainly to make girls. <laughs> <laughs> And that was uh, Ital Italian or? No, it was mixture, mixed, mixture, uh, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, so I went through all the motions of, you know, uh, communion and confirmation, all these rituals that you go through right. as, a, as a Catholic, uh, I'm from the Catholic side of it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, essentially um, there wasn't much religion in it. It was all essentially tradition. So, you know, we, we just followed what we were told to do. And you, yeah. had, you had pasta after that, and all the Italian nah, food, not, and yeah, not bread sure. cooked with the oil and everything else. No, the Italian. Oh, so you know, with the Ch Italian tradition, we we would, um, uh, you know, you know we would have, have confetti and, and, and we'd have, you know, yeah, like, like uh, it wasn't so. Yeah, yeah well, I, I guess, guess so. We we did yeah, have the pasta, pasta and different. everything else that comes with it, but but yeah, it was it was a celebration. Um, which I don't think many people really understood <laughs> okay, fair what, what it was about. It's just a tra tradition, really. So, uh, you, you, I want to just uh, share your journey a bit. Um, so, what made you want to become Muslim? How did it happen? Like, where were you at that time? Mm. Were you at school studying? Uh, we had. Uh, did you have a Muslim friends or Muslim girlfriend at that time? Yeah, no. What was it? Alhamdulillah, I had a... Um, so I was at school, uh, it was uh, the later years of school, year 11, year 12, and I had a, um, well, I met, I met a friend, a um, good friend, Shadi, mm -hmm. uh, and he's actually here now, uh, mm -hmm. back in Sydney, um, and we, we would, uh, uh, you know, he, it was funny because when I was at school, I used to hang around with the Aussies, mm -hmm. right, and we used to um you know make fun of the wogs right. essentially right yeah. and so shadi was part of a small group which we called the arabs okay right so they were a little little oh, group what, 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 that? Was that like bass, bass high school yeah. bass high school yeah yeah wow so so, so the, the bass, bass, bass high school, school just down yeah yeah just down the road yeah. so, so basically, basically bass, bass high school, school has, has like, like what we call a quadrangle like it's a quad, quad and, and when, when you, you have, have lunch, lunch or recess or whatever, or whatever you, yeah, you go yeah, to, to the, the quad, quad. Right. and each group controls an area of the quad, okay. right? So we controlled the front area, Same right? like a prison to me. It's similar, yeah. similar to a prison, yeah. subhanAllah. And, and so the, the, the Arab quarter was down sort of further away and then you had mixtures of everyone else. Well, Shadi was there amongst those and, and um, and I didn't really uh, like the uh, the arrogance of of the of the group that I was hanging around with. Yeah. But that's all I knew. So when uh, I got to know him, uh, we became good friends. Yeah. And we started the band together. And music. Was, yeah, music. We, we you know I used to play the guitar, and he he played guitar and a few other things as well. And uh, and then we started a nightclub. Wow, even both. We actually started two nightclubs in Bankstown. I don't know. Does you want to talk about this uh, shady at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> no, he remembers. He remembers. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we, we were in that scene and, and we were running these nightclubs. It was actually funny because we, we ran a nightclub in Bankstown called yep. Jacob Street Nightclub. Ja Jacob Street? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it used to, opposite Bankstown, the cinema there. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, so we, we became quite popular, uh, yeah. especially amongst the police who were our well, after our clients arresting you or no no they, they, we, we used to let them in for free okay. and we became popular with the uh with the police but anyway so one night um you know we were sitting together and we're watching everyone dancing and making fools of themselves um uh, and one night i i i think we we made a decision we wanted to turn the music off yeah. and see what people do right okay. see so what the reaction is actually, actually experimented we experimented yeah, yeah. okay yeah. So, so so sent a message, message to the, the dj and said turn, turn the music, music off in a, in exactly five minutes okay. don't warn anyone so he turned the music off and 
it was like the people who were dancing, it took them a good 20 seconds to realize that the music was off and to react. And it was like everyone just went into a zombie, no, zombie mode. Yeah. They didn't know what to do, you know. And it was at that moment I realized that this can't be it. <laughs> um, life was uh, a combination of uh, highs and lows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we would try to, um, you know, do things to, to feel happy and feel good about ourselves. And then, you know, at the end of the night when everybody went their way, you find yourself alone again, yeah. then you crash. SubhanAllah. Uh, speaking of crashing and all that, um, at that time, obviously, it was shabby, wasn't practicing. Or no, no, not at all. Not yeah. At all. yeah. So really, what, what, after that, what, what brought you to Islam? What came so, to yeah. yeah, one night we were uh, rehearsing at, in the back of his house, mm -hmm. and his grandmother was a religious woman, and she, she was essentially, um, uh, you know, a bit of a, a, a role model or a guide um, for the family in terms of religion. Um, but the uh, so that particular night we were rehearsing, and according to him, I I was um, I sort of went into a little bit of a trance. Something happened to me or whatever, mm -hmm. and all I remember was um, you know like deja vu. You know like it was a feeling I got that I felt like I had before right. when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I saw in this, I don't know if you call it a vision or whatever, but I saw people uh, dressed in white and all standing in rows, mm -hmm. right? And they were all facing a black object. And then when I came around, he, he asked, he said, what, what happened to you? You were just like, you know, in a trance. And I explained to him what I saw. And he, um, he said, oh, I'm going to go ask my grandmother because she, she knows about this stuff right interpret dreams and stuff whatever yeah whatever. so he runs inside then he comes back and he said wow he goes she said that's how people pray in mecca i go what's a mecca <laughs> you know like what are you talking about anyway after a few weeks uh we started contemplating about what happened and and someone i don't know if it, who made the suggestion uh, it's a long time ago but someone made the suggestion we go to lakemba mosque mm -hmm. right and ask someone so one night we got up, we went to Lakemba Mosque. Uh, funny enough, on the way to Lakemba Mosque, we got pulled over by the police. Um, subhanallah. Yeah. <laughs> so we were on uh, Glassop Street going you, towards. You already been, you already labelled the stairs before we start. <laughs> oh, it was crazy! It was crazy. Um, the f it was so funny. So we, we were on Glassop Street, and all of a sudden, a car comes straight for us with its high beams on. Right. And we thought, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, is he crazy? And then sirens came on. This is right outside the mosque? No, 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 no. This is on Glassop Street going towards Lakemba. Okay. And then another police car and another police car and about 20 police cars. And they stopped us and they took us out of the car and they said, wait there. And they said, uh, you know, this is a stolen vehicle. Uh, it'll get, by the way, it was a Datsun 120Y. <laughs> oh, okay. It could have been the old now. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It was an, an orange one. And uh, so so basically, towards the end, this car, this police car comes speeding and, you know, like in the movies, you know, this, kid's, this uh, lady police officer comes out and she said, Shadi, this is a stolen car. Okay. <laughs> anyway, about an hour later, uh they they came to us and they said oh well we made a mistake um the car that was reported stolen was actually in queensland not in new south wales so, that, that so it was a big mistake said the police made mistakes it was a nothing it was a <laughs> 30 years later. <laughs> it was a crazy mistake um but it, funny enough it was while we were on the way to the mosque right so it, when we were going to the nightclubs and when we were doing everything else no issues, right? So after Alhamdulillah, you you came became Muslim. You reverted. Uh, after yeah, so when we when when we went to the mosque, as soon as I entered Lakemba Mosque, mm -hmm. uh, I the the feeling I got was unbelievable. It was overwhelming. Like I felt like something, uh, like something was unreal. You know, I I, I didn't feel like I felt, wow, what's this place? You know, like peace. I felt like real peace. You know. 
and then uh, alhamdulillah we met a couple of people there and they started talking to us about Islam um, one brother do, do you, you remember know? what what were like do you remember um, what day it was was it Friday night was it like I can't, I can't remember. you can't remember that. talking a long time ago yeah I know but I was just thinking maybe because you got in there and um, a lot of people so maybe could be shocking for you at that time well the, the at that time uh, hearing of someone uh, accepting Islam was like a big thing. Yeah, yeah, there was only a handful of people that accepted Islam, and um, so you accepted Islam there and there. No, 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 no. It took me about one and a half years. Mm, so hanging to, out, uh, talking about Islam. Yeah, visiting the there, and there was one brother Iba. Uh, you know, he was instrumental in, um, you know, continuously, and there was another Algerian brother. Uh, alhamdulillah, he, he he's. He was just uh, really like the inspiration I got from them was amazing. Yeah, at that time I remember back then there's a lot of a lot of good days. Good, 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 yeah, yeah, really good. To bring people to Islam. So anyway, you became Muslim. I became Muslim now, after one and a half years. Yeah. One and a half years. Now, it wasn't that easy, was it? No. So what did you? What kind of hardship did you actually find in become Muslim, or at least uh, yeah, when you yeah. become Muslim, what did you find the hardest thing about? Being a Muslim, I guess. Yeah, uh, coming coming to terms with um, the reality of what it is. Okay. Right. So, uh, I I realize that if I'm going to accept this religion, I can't do it half half. I have to either do it or not do it. Um, but the uh, the ru the rules and regulations that came with it. For example, like the prayer and the fasting and, and you know, the five pillars, you know, the, the five, they were things that I realized this is a serious matter because if I do it, I have to do it right. And also, um, it took me a little while to come to terms with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the only thing I can put it down to was Shaitan's last attempt to try and pull me back. Um, but I, I, I was questioning at uh, in the early stages, you know, who, who is this man? Why do they praise him so much? Uh, you know, w you know what what's so special about him? You know, and, and those sorts of things. So I started reading about his life. Mm. Subhanallah. Uh, then that not so much hatred, but that um, uh, enmity, I guess, yeah. towards him. Mm became love because I realized that subhanallah this uh, Prophet he was uh, was a great man and he was an extension to to the rest of the prophets so the the you know the, the extension and the, the extension end. and the yeah and the end but he he was one of them you know yeah. he wasn't this uh, outcast yeah. um, Arab guy who tried to Changed the world. He was he was a prophet. He he was selected by God, you know. And when I came to terms with that, everything changed. Um, we have viewers that probably ask, uh, they are only that position, like you become Muslim. And I want to talk a little bit about your mum and dad, your family. Mm. How did they take it? How did they take <clears throat> you uh, being Muslim? And what? What happened? Are they Muslim themselves or are they... they well, I hid it from them. You, oh, in so, the beginning. Okay. Yeah. So, how did you hide from them? How long? Uh, I can't remember the exact amount of years, but but I, I um, you know, I hid it uh, because I was worried that, you know, as soon as... It, I mean, it's not just my parents. It was my relatives. Uh, it was my friends. I mean, I had um, uh, friends that were... Macedonian, for example, like Macedonian friends, and they, you know, I essentially lost everything, lost everyone, because all the people I knew uh, didn't like Islam. Mm -hmm. They didn't like Muslims, right? You, you told me earlier at one stage that at that time you were getting married to this Italian girl. Uh, the, I, I was, uh, in, yeah, so she was uh, like a girlfriend at the time, before I became a Muslim. Course, yeah. And when I um, uh, <laughs> I approached her and I said, oh, I need to tell you something, I, I became a Muslim. 
and she went hysterical like she absolutely pff, wanted to she, I thought she was gonna break break her house because it was at her house and, and uh, yeah she went hysterical and she said I wanted to be a bride I wanted to have a, a, a wedding in a church and, da, 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 da. and anyway at the end of the day um, I said well I'm not going to change so what do you want to do and essentially we we split uh, she said good luck with your your, your life and I said good luck with her life and that was it wow oh, yeah. it, was, it was a lot of sacrifices had to be made uh, but with with my mother um, subhanallah I'll let her one day tell the story inshallah right inshallah but but in a nutshell my mother alhamdulillah became Muslim alhamdulillah. and my father also accepted Islam just before he because my father has dementia so oh, alhamdulillah before he made dementia he made shahada alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Uh, but my mother subhanallah the, the just really quickly um, so I was at uni and she was cleaning my room and I had the Quran on the bookshelf and as she's cleaning the bookshelf the Quran fell and landed on the ground and it opened in uh, up to the the surah surah maryam and that's in english, it opened that was in english yeah i had english arabic yeah, yeah. it opened uh, uh, on surah surah maryam and she picked it up and she started reading and subhanallah she found in that surah the story of maryam as a child which oh. is not in the in the yeah. bible that's right that's right? right the christians don't know what happened to mary as a child mm -hmm. so she said later that she always wanted to know the story of Maryam as a child and when she read this book she got she became fascinated so when I got home she said I need to talk to you I found this book on your shelf I said, ah, I'm finished <laughs> I'm gone yeah? Yeah. and then she told me the what she read she mm -hmm. said I want to know more about this religion Okay. And alhamdulillah, then we started talking and, you know, over a short period of time, she accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless you, bless you, inshallah. Inshallah. Bless all the people become Muslim. Um, so, okay, so now you, you're a mom become Muslim. Yeah. Dad, of course. What the... Uh, of course, the reason we have in this podcast here, to, yeah. to let people know it's not easy becoming a Muslim, it's hardship and also it's uh, support um i want what my really questions to you is um did you get any support from the from the community i mean uh, support in the sense of helping with materials and understanding islam there wasn't much at the time okay uh in terms of support yes there were some individuals who um who dedicated some time to help mm -hmm. um, I had people around me alhamdulillah uh, I, I don't know because uh, at the time I used to have a uh, after university or whatever I started a shop in Greenacre so I don't know whether I became popular because I owned a computer shop or because I became Muslim <laughs> remind me the name of the computers Cher cherry technology oh yeah yeah cherry technology <laughs> I, it's part of a long time. I used to do some work with you back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that was right. A very, like that was the place to be, isn't it? Oh, it was. It was. Yeah, so I used to, uh, you know, have invitations every Ramadan. I used to have double bookings. Right. Right. And and I, I put it. I think I put it down to because I had the computer shop because I was popular amongst the community. Yeah. Um, I think what happened was after the, I didn't have the computer shop. I went back to no invitations for Ramadan. <laughs> okay, that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. so um, I, I guess it's, you know, if you're popular, you, you, you get all the invitations. If you're not popular, you, you don't. Uh, I think that's how it works. Um, but, yeah, no, going back to your question, I did have uh, some individuals who, who did provide support. Um, but the, the, the problem is, is that everyone has their own life, their own issues their own uh time limits so you can't expect people to you know always be there for you but in terms of um any institutions or any um any support groups there wasn't anything like that uh brother ahmed uh, or i should say carl carl mm. 
support in the community uh, and I uh, want to mention this important message that um, I'm sitting here now running this podcast mm. um, for the reverts but from next time you'll be sitting in my seat and I'll yep. be sitting somewhere else because you're going to be running this Ciao. because you feel that you you need to help this uh, reverts up there uh, yeah. by giving yeah. unity by uniting them together by um, yeah, seeing what's going on and support them through the community work even uh, so what what kind of things that you're thinking that you're going to be inshallah doing for the for the rivers in sydney or maybe across australia one day well, inshallah uh, i think the first thing is just to give them a give the reverts a place uh, or, or a point of contact mm -hmm. uh, if they need any assistance or they're, they're struggling with anything mm -hmm. Um, and basing that on experience, um, having been there and done that. Um, secondly, to um, you know, provide a, 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 a I guess a group um, where we can meet up. I, I was even thinking of maybe having you know monthly monthly get-togethers, a picnic, for example, or something like that, uh, where reverts can get together and they can. Barbecue, yeah, have a chat, you know. The question is going to be, is it halal meat? Yeah, well, you know, you're going to get some who are going to take it real strong and and some that will take it really easy. But um, but essentially it's just to, to provide a, 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 a place where they can reach out if they need help. And not all of them will need help. A lot of them will, uh, you know, be able to pick themselves up and go on their journey. But the, the biggest issues I've found with reverts that I've met and, and myself is one is the prayer, right? So the prayer is the, the first and foremost essential thing that has to be learnt. Yeah. Even the Prophet saw us and uh, when converts used to come to him, the first thing that he would teach them was the prayer. That's right. Right? And the prayer was it. So the prayer was the number one thing. So, um, just uh, you know, helping them with with the prayer. I mean, there's there's brothers that still ask me, you know, till this day that have been reverted to Islam for many years, but haven't had that. Um, I guess the you know the discipline or the the, um, the time to learn the prayer. You can't do it on your own in in a lot of circumstances because you know there's the Arabic language. There's the you know the rules of the prayer there's the timing of the prayer there's a whole bunch of things you yeah, know yeah, ahmed um Carl, I, what happened i i meet a lot of river mm. and because they come into the center for a number of reasons but what uh, funny is that i have some rivers about 30 35 years being river and she or he don't know had a pray problem mm. and they married to some muslim arab and what the, you find that the husband is practicing Muslim mm. and he knows how to read the Quran and he knows how to do everything but that they don't teach him the basic and that is a worry because mm. basic I mean uh, uh, the, the Fatiha the, 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 I mean 30 years for a person should be able at least to know how to make Kudu yeah. or what even worse is that some of the sisters I mean, the river sisters Allah by them um, even the hijab that I had to wear. Mm. So, somebody, for example, um, become some 30 years and went, one of the sisters told her to put the scarf on, showing her ears, for example, mm. and just stayed on. But they don't bother, uh, or there's no support, I should say, to mm. teach them or to tell them um, this is wrong, uh, this should be placed this way. And there's that kind of program that you're going to be running in the future where you should be, inshallah. Um, okay, also I want to ask you about um, uh, the, uh, um, the, what we call the platform. So uh, mm. we're going to be using platform at the moment, the Notice Board of Australia, as yeah. a Notice Board of Australia platform. And you're going to be doing this every Tuesday? Every Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Yeah. So we would like to ask everybody that uh, to come on board yeah. um, to ask questions if they like. Yeah. And anybody that um, wants to uh, ask any question, they're more than happy to drop in, inbox us the number at least, and we can get the ball run, running, I guess, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. And also what we will be doing is we're going to try to have a guest, uh, a Muslim revert guest uh, on the show, um, ask them a few questions like we did with uh, ourselves. And That's fantastic. Um, if there's anybody that wants to come on board to tell the story, because it's honestly fascinating because what happened is some of the stories are just amazing. Mm-hmm. How to become Muslim and so on. <coughs> because I see this happening here every time we convert to Islam mm-hmm. and everything else. I had a young lady only last week where she um, she became Muslim mm-hmm. and I'm proud of her because she really, she looks like a humble mm-hmm. uh, person. And um, you yeah, know, she's 18 years old, so it was 17, right? Uh, she was 17, nine months, or you know. Um, and she became Muslim from my heart. I can see the, the, the goodness in it. And what happens? I come to call from your parents, said to me, You know, you please remove the video, uh, you know, shouldn't be brought. I said, What for? It said, oh, It's for the privacy of the family. I said, But her face is not showing. He goes, but her name is there. But he says, nobody knows the name. So how did you get the video? So basically, um, she sent it to the father, saying that she's become Muslim now. Mm. She's happy about it, but he went to be further, investigated me and everything else. And I said to him, I said to him, look, to be honest, um, in Australia, you can do whatever you want. You can become Muslim, you can become Jewish, you become gay you can become lesbian this is you know it's up to them no one can stop um and uh, I, I mentioned that to him and, and i said look if she wants to remove the video then she has every right to and also this kind of people they need support um teaching them how to pray and everything else would you would you be would you be starting something very soon inshallah you know st- everything has to go by step by step but um you know, I think uh, supporting the the family who are ignorant to what Islam is um, is probably as important as supporting the revert themselves because ninety, I'd say ninety five percent of the issues that most reverts will have is with the people closest to them, right? So them not accepting their decision. I mean, it's funny because you know you can go home and. Tell your parents, oh, you know, I'm colouring my hair green, right? They will accept and I'll accept it and yeah. say, oh, that's nice, you know, you yeah. coloured your hair green. Yeah. Um, but if you mention Islam, you know, the, that's like you, <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. thrown yourself into the deep end of the ocean, right? So, so it's about it's about education. It's about um, giving um, people the the knowledge of what Islam is. That it's not a bad religion. Um, for example, when I was young, my grandmother used to tell me, um, stay away from the Muslims. They're evil. And I, I used to think, wow, the Muslims are evil. You know, and Muslims being Lebanese, you know, like, we, because we grew up, like, <laughs> thinking that only Lebanese were Muslims, yeah, right? Yeah, Didn't know if there was Indonesian Muslims and, yeah. and whatever, but every... Muslim was a that's was a Basil High. Yeah, well, Basil High, you're going to banks down, right? But she used to say, "Stay away from the 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 Muslims. They're evil." And I didn't make much of it. And she said, "You know, the Muslims they they worship the devil, and and if they have an opportunity, they'll kill you." Like she's what she used to tell me, you know. Right. I think when I accepted Islam, she was still alive. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the, probably one of the things that intrigued me about Islam was, was what she was saying true. Yeah, right? When I started reading the Quran, I found that everything she told me was the opposite. Yeah. Hang on, these people aren't worshipping the devil, they're worshipping God. Unless I'm missing something. And hang on, there's the word there's Moses, and there's, there's Noah, and there's Abraham, and there's Jesus. What, what's Jesus doing there? So, right? Uh, and then there's Muhammad, and there's, like, but it like it was nothing, nothing what she said. So that fascinated me even more to read more about Islam, to find out more. But essentially, at the end of the day, um, uh, I was I had the opportunity to explain Islam to her, right? Whether she liked it or she d- didn't like, it or she accepted it or didn't, but at least she had the opportunity to learn what Islam was. 
the truth of, of Islam, not what her priest told her. Subhanallah. Um, um, I want to finish off with this question to you. Sure. Um, what is your favorite surah of the Quran that really, like, every time you listen to it, sort of gives you that um, emotion, I guess? Uh, look, uh, I have to say Surah Al-Baqarah no. is... And you learn the Quran, you, you can read Quran. Yeah, I can read Quran, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I was uh, actually um, teaching uh, basic uh, Tajweed and an alphabet and Quran to to reverts. Yeah, uh, but that. also to some Lebanese, like some Lebanese brothers who n never had the opportunity to learn Quran. They grew up like you know like Aussies yeah. and all of a sudden they found Islam again you know like everybody else and they just realized hang on I can't read Quran they were too embarrassed to go to um, you know a sheikh and say hey you know I'm born Muslim and I can speak Arabic but I can't read Quran so I thought we started off just saying well how about I teach you what I know I mean send little I don't know much, but at least you can give you a start. And alhamdulillah, it was successful. Like those people, um, you know, uh, can vouch that they they learned the alphabet. They learned how to read. Now they're, they're reading Quran and they took it to the next level um, beyond what I could uh, do for them. So basically support is, a, is, a, is important. Support is number one. Okay, so that brings me back to something that um, happened to me not long ago, mm. and where I wanted to learn about fuk mm. of Islam. I just wanted a bit more knowledge. So al alm nur. So I want to learn, so I can at least when I talk to somebody or communicate to somebody to um, know what I'm talking about or try to put it in, in hadith form. Or, what I did is I went to a class, I won't mention where, and there were all the young guys, mm. like 30, 25, 40, yeah, maximum, and I was here, I am the oldest one there. I walked in happy, I bought the books, I wanted to study, and then the sheikh, the main sheikh walked in there and he said to me something. He said to me, Abu Hamza, you at this old age now, you come to learn. And I looked at him and I said, al alm nur Mm. You understand? It's it's no. I'm learning. It. It should be supporting me. Of course. And that really took me off. That that sort of threw me away from even going to classes. Yeah. But I changed places. I didn't want to go to a particular place anymore because, as a sheikh, you were supposed to be supporting, not not that. Especially with revert. I mean, if your revert comes in, it doesn't know anything. We should be spending more time teaching them about the, the, the principle of Islam. The foundation of Islam, uh, everything, even the Aqidah, but in small terms and small um, uh, spaces, not uh, forcibly. Mm. And so we have to make them understand because once they understand it properly, they are sure they they go a long way. Then rather Muslim pray for this, that, and mm. uh, this kind of thing. But inshallah, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to to make this happen. And uh, once more time, uh, one more time. Uh, bro brother Carlo, uh, welcome mm, uh, you, to brother. the own show, inshallah, which I'm Shalom. hosting. Shalom. And from next week, Abidnillah, if we Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us, uh, inshallah, to that time. And during even Ramadan, we're going to be doing yeah, this inshallah. as well, inshallah. So if any brothers and sisters up there, uh, inshallah, if any brothers and sisters up there want any questions or just type in, inbox us, inshallah. We'll get back to you, and if anybody wants to, yeah, you know, come aboard, uh, inshallah, for this uh, podcast for the sake of Allah, please also inbox us, uh, especially if sisters want to uh, talk about experiences as well. You're more than welcome, and uh, thank you. And they'll be sitting right here. <laughs> they'll be sitting where you are. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you one more time. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I leave you. With this beautiful uh, dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever I learned from this lesson today. And uh, don't forget your brothers and sisters in Islam, make dua for them all over the world. We need we need to support one another and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on all the people that are affected with the earthquake all over the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.